Hey everyone, welcome back to episode four of our VS Toolbox mini series all about getting started with XAML and MAUI applications. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson. I'm your co-host, Robert Green. And I'm Paul Sheriff. Awesome. And yeah, we're in episode four. In episode three, we got started talking about how easy it is to lay out your uh, your application with the power of a grid layout. And this time we're gonna continue that conversation but with some new layouts. So what are we talking about, Paul? All right, well, this time we're gonna be talking about a few different things. We've got horizontal stack layouts, we have vertical stack layouts, and we have a flex layout. So let's go up back over to our application here. And I'm gonna add another row to the grid, first off. And then I'm gonna come all the way down here right before the end of the grid and I'm gonna add what's called a horizontal stack layout. So I've set the grid.row is equal to seven, grid.column is equal to one, and the spacing is five on this horizontal stack layout to give myself just a little bit more room between the buttons and that control. Now you notice what happened when I put that in, you saw the save and the cancel buttons display right here. And since it's a horizontal stack layout that you see right there, that means it's going to take the content that is between the opening element and the closing element. These two are the two different content pieces in there. One is a button with a text of save. One is a button with a text of cancel. And it's going to make those go horizontal. Now, obviously I could you know change that to a vertical stack layout if I want. And now you can see what happens. So now it actually makes them go vertical, all right? But remember that they are in that second column, right? Grid column is equal to one. And that second column is defined as take up the rest of the space. So now you can really kind of see how that auto and that asterisk really work, right? Because the auto says take the largest one here. So it looked at email address and said, well, that's the largest one. So we're gonna use that size for the width for all of the, for all columns, yeah, or for that one column in all rows. And then, you know, the asterisk says, take up whatever the rest of the space is. And you can see, as I move this in and out, it just simply changes that width for me automatically. All right, so we have horizontal stack layout. We have vertical stack layout. All right, so we can use both of those. There is one more called a stack layout, but for this one, you then have to specify the orientation. Do you want it to be horizontal or vertical? Do they work the same way? What's the difference? Well, do they, they work exactly the same way, okay? But horizontal stack layout and vertical stack layout are more performant because they don't have, they don't have all the extra, stack layout really is kind of heavier because it has to decide on the fly based on an orientation attribute Am I doing horizontal or am I doing vertical? So according to the docs, they say, don't use stack layout. Either use horizontal or use vertical, okay? And you, you really understand why, because if I'm saying I'm always a horizontal stack layout, I only have you know a little bit of code to write. If I've got a stack layout and I got to choose both, I've got this much road code that's in there. I mean, what's the appeal of, is there ever any reason why you should maybe go the generic stack layout route. Now, I think, I think again, this is one of those things that's left over. It's kind of more of a legacy thing. Like in uh, WPF, we had stack panel. Okay, in a stack panel, you had orientation. All right, so they did stack layout. I think, I can't remember if that was in Xamarin or not. Do you remember, Robert? I can't remember. I don't remember either. One, if you, Let's say you wanted to be able to flip from horizontal to vertical on the fly as you resized the page, then stack layout, the orientation you could set in code. So that might be when you would use one over the other. That's true. Um, yeah, that might be something, that might be a good way to think about that. You yep. can't change a horizontal stack layout to a vertical stack layout, but you right. can change the orientation of a stack layout. So right. I guess- so maybe binding the orientation property to a property in, in your code behind 
Right. And then based on something you're doing, you yeah. might switch it. That'd be a perfect example. There you go. We figured it out. <laughs> Almost like we know what we're doing. <laughs> All right. So there's our horizontal stack layout that gives us our buttons nice and neat down there. But let's find out. Let's do another one up here. So let's see. We're going to find the one that's the login ID and the entry. And let's go ahead and change that now. So I still want the label in grid row three, column zero. Then I'm adding a vertical stack layout here on grid row three and grid column one. But the vertical stack layout says I want the entry and then right below it, I want a label here with a font size of micro. And so you can see what it did here. So it's, it's given me a little bit of help text here on the login ID. Please use a combination of letters and numbers, okay? So this is a little bit contrived. I'm not sure you would do this, uh, but I kind of wanted to show a vertical stack layout because obviously what we could do here on the entry is you could actually do a placeholder, right? And then you get that nice kind of grayed out uh, background before you start typing in. Once you go in and you start typing, that goes away. So maybe even a combination of both isn't bad if you've got, you know, maybe something kind of complicated on what needs to go into a, an entry. And so maybe you need that so that the user has, has to remember something. So this still could be something that you may indeed use, but that's up to you. But anyway, so there we go. We've got a couple of different options there. Vertical stack layout, horizontal stack layout. Now there's another one here. So guess what? We're gonna add yet another row onto here. And Question, then- um, What do you do if you wanted to have like a dynamically changing grid where the rows can like increment to like infinity? Is that possible or? Well, you'd have to write code in C Sharp, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so there's a couple of things, right? So first off, if you wanna reference something from code and we will, actually do something like that, I think a little bit later, but you, you need to name it first. So you might do something like, I'm, I'm the, the you know grid main here. So that way in the code behind, you could do grid main. And then what you're able to do is you could actually add on to the row definitions property using C sharp. Okay, but you'd have to do that in code to actually do that. Makes sense. Yeah, great question. So typically we don't name our controls because we do most things with data binding and we don't have to, but there are certain cases where you do need to do the name. And for any of you uh, uh, WPF people out there, the X colon is optional in WPF. However, if you're really looking at, well, you know, at some point in the future, we might be upgrading our WPF to .NET MAUI put in X colon every single time, okay? So it's just because you're gonna need it here in Maui. As you can see, name does not work by itself. All right, so now let's go down here. I wanna show you one more thing and this is called flex layout, okay? Oops, I apologize, I put this in the wrong place, didn't I? I meant to put that there and then increment this. Remember I added one row on while I'm putting something else in the middle here. So now what you can see is I've got a, a label in grid row seven that says is enrolled. And then I've got a flex layout. Now flex layout has some really cool properties here. It has a wrap and I say, yes, I do want to wrap. Okay, and the direction that I want to wrap is on the row. So if you look at this, if I kind of now take this and I look at that. So those check boxes are now all that way. But as soon as I start going like this, look what happens. They wrap very nicely for me because they're within this flex layout. Okay. If I take the wrap out, you can see that it's still in a flex layout, but it doesn't know what to do. So it just keeps them like that. And you can see it gets a little funky there. All right, so we put the wrap in and that helps, okay? So if we did column, okay, that means it would start going this way, but I'd have to set it up completely different. So I'll let you play with that. In fact, Microsoft has a really good uh, uh, 
sample on the flex layout in their documentation. But what I did on each one of these is within this flex layout, I did horizontal stack layouts where I used a label and a checkbox in each one of these. So what it's doing is because each one of these horizontal stack layouts, each one of these are the child within the flex layout, that's the grouping that it's gonna do. It doesn't break the label and the checkbox, right? It wraps it based on that horizontal stack layout. And that's really what we want. We wanna make sure that it keeps the label with the checkbox. Otherwise the, the label might be up on one line and the checkbox would be lower and that's not something that we really want. All right, so we have this horizontal stack layout, we have the vertical stack layout, we have the flex layout. And this is very much, if you look up you know, CSS on the web, this flex layout works very similar to the way that it does on the web. Okay. Now again, I did use these spacings on the horizontal stack layouts. So it gives me just a little bit more room uh, for these. They, they may not be 100% necessary, okay? But as you can see, when I take it out, the label gets just a little bit closer to that checkbox. Now, don't worry about where the labels are. They're kind of way up at the top there. We're going to move those down in a bit, all right? We're going to fix that. But I love having that extra little bit of spacing between the label and the checkbox. Just like we did with the grid, we added that column and row spacing that gave us a little bit more room between each row and column we can do the same thing on these stack layouts, okay, horizontal or vertically. The spacing works on both. All right. Cool. So different layouts. So we have the grid layout. And here's what I want to mention on this too. Um, the grid layout, what I like doing is I like using, if I'm going to know I'm going to be targeting a phone, I, know, I don't like to do more than two columns on a grid layout, okay? If I'm doing anything more than that, I'm gonna probably move more to the flex layout and use horizontal and vertical uh, stack layouts to kind of make everything work the right way on a phone. Okay, I like the grid for setting up my basically two column, you know, three column if one of them is very short, but that's up to you to decide how you do that based on your target. But for everything else, I do like to use flex layout and the horizontal and vertical stack layout. So hopefully that's kind of a write once and then at runtime, let it adapt to whatever the screen is. So if you're on Windows, nice and wide, there we go. If you're on Windows, nice and wide, it might all be on one. If it's on the Android, it'd be like this or the phone. But if you're on an iPad like that, then it automatically adjusts and you never have to worry about it. Yep. And you can see how everything does yeah. that very nicely here. So, and you know, if you think about it, that's probably about the size of a phone right there. Right. You know? And so I can still play with this and, you know, we're going to, we're going to do more styling of this and you can make it look a little nicer, you know, but I'm just trying to get you the idea so you can see how this wrapping works. Mm -hmm. So there we go. There's our additional way of laying out screens. Cool. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah, I, I think that's really great. You have so many options for layouts um, that make everything look so clean <laughs> nice. Yeah. But it still doesn't look great. Yeah, it could be better. Right? So, so that means we need to start applying more styles, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you think is coming up next? Styles, I'm guessing, right? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. So tune in next time when we prettify this application even further with the help of styles. So until next time, happy coding.